The sun just unleashed a huge solar flare, and it's the largest of its kind in at least six years. It's called an X-class solar flare, which is when the sun ejects a very potent burst of plasma into space. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center said on Thursday, quote, this is likely one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded. So what does that mean for us? Hi guys, many of my viewers have asked me, could the recent swarm of earthquakes all over the world, the volcanic eruption, could that be related to the solar flares? So I have looked into this and it is a quite interesting thing that is happening right now. So a solar storm is heading towards Earth and it is going to meet us within the next few days. The sun has eruptions and Yesterday, the sun had a strong eruption and it was called, that eruption is called a solar flare. And this eruption was classified as an X, as class X. This is the highest category that a solar eruption can have. So it's just nothing small. And uh, this eruption is considered the strongest in the current solar cycle. And it is compared to the one that we had in September 2017. So this eruption is expected to have an impact on Earth. And the so-called X flares, they can damage satellites, disrupt communication and navigation systems. And also in extreme cases, they can also cause power outages. And I noticed, um, I have satellite image and I noticed disruptions yesterday and the day before yesterday that normally I never have. It's a very reliable system. So I don't know if that's related, but it could be guys. So this is something to take serious. This is not some conspiracy theory weirdo thing as it might sound when you first hear it. No, this is really real. So the sun does have eruptions that impact the earth. So there is also the possibility that because of these eruptions, and that's not a bad thing, that the northern lights will be very visible, that northern lights will become increasingly visible because of that. This solar eruption was accompanied by a coronal mass ejection that has ejected billions of tons of plasma into space. And these charged particles, electrically charged particles, they are expected to reach Earth in about one to three days. And although this eruption was not aimed directly at Earth, the interference with aircraft radio communications have already been reported. So, and that's a bad thing, right? For airplanes that are up in the air. So experts at the Space Weather Prediction Center expect that the most severe impacts could occur on December 17th. And uh, if the charged particles hit the Earth magnetic field, it could result in a magnetic storm or a solar storm. That's what it's called. And this will affect satellites, guys. So satellites in low orbits are at risk of crashing or being damaged by the heating and the expansion of the atmosphere caused by these solar particles. So therefore, evasive maneuvers are carried out currently to protect the satellites when such a solar storm occurs on December 17th or around December 17th. And um, the experts are saying that they, they see right now the beginning of the activity maximum. So they think this activity is reaching the maximum. What does that mean? So an astrophysicist has said, for example, that the sun is ready at the beginning of its maximum activity and it will reach its maximum by 2024. So that means that the sun will be very active and will have many sunspots while charged plasma is increasingly being thrown out into space. And that's what we just learned is causing disruptions for us. So this can cause beautiful auroras, 
but also the problems with radio communications. And the astrophysicist Dr. Volker Botmer from the University of Göttingen in Germany, he has explained that the sun has higher activity in this cycle than in the previous cycle. And he believes that the, the current solar activity maximum has already begun. So he emphasized that a solar maximum typically has not one peak, it has two peaks. And with the time from a minimum to the first peak taking about three years, followed by a similar length of time to the next minimum. However, he mentioned that the current solar storms are rather small and they are considered normal events for us. So, however, large solar storms can have significant impacts as we already described. So in the last few months, we have already experienced some stronger solar storms so that there were even northern lights in the Alps, in the Alpine region. And that is rather unusual. So he says that the fears of a super solar storm that might come to us are a little bit overblown because in order for that to happen, many factors need to come together to produce such extremely st strong storms. And uh, there are many solar storms within 11 year solar cycle. So that's the cycle that these storms do, but only a few that are extreme and only a few that actually reach the earth. So the strongest solar storms observed to date occurred in 1859. It's called the Carrington event. And in 1921, the New York Railroad, Railroad Storm. So with the research team is recently showing that another superstorm also hit Earth in 1872. At that time, telegraphs were primarily disrupted. So, but today in our highly technological world, disruptions could be significantly greater doing such particularly strong events. I mean, we're just not telegraphing each other. We're having so much we're completely depending on communications if if i say this as the whole package so that we get that right so this fiery flash on the sun's surface that is 93 million miles away from us is classed as an x flare of the highest intensity with the potential to affect radio communications and other things. So the NASA has released images of what they really say is the most powerful solar flare in six years. And it has knocked out some radio communication already for a short time on Thursday knocked out radio signals and airline communications on Earth. This image of the solar flare, I mean, it's like you're looking at sci-fi, but this actually happened today and it was captured by a NASA telescope. So the NASA has captured this image that I want to show you here. It's brightly colored of the phenomenon known as the coronal mass ejection from its solar dynamics observatory that they have there. They can capture these images. And uh, also they have a spacecraft operation launched in 2010 that is also constantly monitoring the sun's activity. So it was, as NASA says, a class X flare of the highest intensity and it can affect not only the radio communications but electric power grids, grids navigation signals, and also they pose a risk to spacecrafts and astronauts. So much higher risk than during times where we were just sending telegraphs, guys. So on Thursday, that burst of energy cost about two hours of radio interference in some parts of the US and elsewhere during daylight hours. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric and Administration's Space Weather Prediction Center, that's a long word, called it an amazing event. So likely one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded. So bigger than the ones recorded in the past where we didn't have that many 
electronic devices that are dependent on satellites. So the center said its impact on radio communications was felt between midday and 2 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday and that their scientists were analyzing other effects of that event located over the far northwest area of the sun. So it was the strongest solar flare definitely that they recorded since September 10th, 2017 and the most powerful of the current solar cycle, definitely, with large distance. So most class X solar flares that impact the Earth have been graded between one and nine, but they have classified the event on Thursday as an eight, as an X eight. So the European Space Agency said the most powerful solar flare in recorded history was an X-28 event on November 4th, 2003. So we have to see what is coming and how it will be classified. So it seems they cannot predict very precisely how high it will be, but what they are saying it it definitely has the potential to be high and to come back you know I'll, i have reported a lot about the potential eruption in iceland with the magma tunnel that's underneath the town of grindavik there there's a power plant and a tourist attraction that have a magma chamber underneath the land there is rising so but we see daily reports of earthquakes of devastating volcanic eruptions so people are starting to maybe trying to connect the dots so scientists do not agree on whether these solar flares are the cause or not so there is different opinions i want to look a little bit deeper into that before i say more about this um, but for now, guys, please let me know if that's something you're interested in. Um, leave me a comment. Leave this video a like. If I see that this video gets a lot of likes and, and comments and views, um, I will look deeper into it and report more about it. So it's you, my viewers. You decide what do you want to see. Um, and if you made it that far, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And I hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. Um, check out the videos in the end screen. There's lots of stuff about Iceland, about the super volcano in Italy that is threatening to erupt, and also about the Titan submersible disaster. So check this out. I would love to see you in one of my other videos. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I'd like to see you again. Thank you so much, guys. Stay safe. Be prepared wherever you are. Bye-bye.